In part one of the Mossberg 590A1 field stripping procedure, I showed you some nomenclature of the various parts and a recommended procedure for a fairly detailed disassembly. Now that you've taken your shotgun apart and presumably cleaned it up and lubricated it as needed, it's time to put it back together. Stay to the end of this video and I'll show you a function check procedure that is recommended in the Mossberg Field Armorer's Manual. Riley Schrader here with Defensive Firearms Instruction. I'm a retired cop and personal firearms trainer. I help new and veteran shooters get or improve their defensive shooting skills by teaching the art, science, and laws of self-defense, whether guns are involved or not. While we've got this disassembled, let's take a look at how this bolt and slide assembly work with each other. So again, here's your bolt. This is the bolt face, and this is the top locking lug of the bolt assembly. And this is the, the slide or the slide assembly of the, the bolt carrier group. Now this locking lug here is going to hook into this locking lug here in this manner and this is how it would look while it's sitting in the action before the action bars do anything the action bars are going to fit up into these notches here on either side and pull this bolt slide assembly back to pull the bolt to the rear and remove it from the firing chamber this is part of the unlocking cycle of operation bolt slide, bolt assembly. You'll notice on the Mossberg there are two extractors which help to ensure the positive extraction of the fired cartridges. So our first step in reassembly is going to be to reinstall the action bars that are connected to the fore end. So you're going to do that by placing them on the magazine tube and then begin to slide them to the rear. Now notice that these action bars are pointed down at a pretty significant angle and that's as designed and also notice that they are spring-loaded. When I release them they fall back into place. So what you have to do is pull these up as you're sliding them into the the grooves in the action themselves and make sure that they're pushed up all the way so they slide into the proper groove. Now you can reinstall your elevator making sure that you pinch these to the uh, rear and also make sure that the the safety is in this rearward position. Pinch these, line them up into the alignment holes on either side, and install, reinstall your elevator into the action, like that. Double check to make sure that it rotates freely. Next step is going to be to install the, the bolt. You're going to slide that into the action like this. And make sure that when you're doing so that the bolt lines up with this piece here. This little piece here that is the actual ejector. There's a, a groove in the, the bolt that needs to line up with that. So line those up, push this down, and now your bolt is going to slide all the way to the rear as it should. Now you're going to install the, the slide. Now just as we did before, make sure that the, the bolt is lined up with the edge of this cutout here in the slide. 
and that's going to allow you to drop the slide in and this is the forward edge of the slide drop that straight down and then wiggle that to line up with the the action bars like this that action bar notch has to fit in the groove of the slide also the locking lug of the slide has to engage into the locking lug of the bolt make sure that this remains aligned and pressed down to ensure that it's in the, the proper groove. Now you're going to reinstall your interrupter and your shell stop. The, the curved ends face towards the inside like this. Just like that. This one's going to go on this side here. This notch, this pin rather, is going to line up into that the, uh, hole in the receiver. And then the shell stop is going to go on the other side into the slot that's machined in there like that. And that just stays in there all by itself. Now sometimes these will fall out before you get the other procedure, before you get the other uh, trigger assembly in, so just be careful. You may need to hold these in place with your fingers, but that's perfectly all right. So like we took out the trigger assembly before, you're going to want to lead with this forward edge here and then rotate the rest of the trigger assembly down into place, just like that. You may have to give it a little bump. to get that to go into position correctly. And then reinstall your trigger assembly pin. And again, you may need to wiggle it just a little bit to get that hole to line up, but that's as it should be. And there we go. And now you've reinstalled the trigger assembly retaining pin. Position the forward edge of the bolt face halfway in the ejection port, like this. Then you're going to want to put the slide the barrel onto the magazine tube and the barrel extension into the action. Slide it back in, and you want to make sure that this barrel extension lines up inside here with the the lug of the barrel. Now you're going to reinstall your follower and then your magazine tube spring and screw on the magazine end cap or the barrel extension. And now you have reassembled your Mossberg shotgun. Let's talk about that function check that I mentioned earlier. First thing you're going to want to do is check your magazine. Make sure that that's empty. Visually and physically check that. And then you're going to do the same visually and physically. Check the chamber to make sure that it's empty. Close and lock the action. Look for the action lock lever. That's this lever right here. Make sure that's in the downward position. Put the safety in the on position, pulling it to the rear, and then pull the trigger. If the trigger does not fall, that means that, it's, that the uh, safety button is working. Disengage the safety, pushing it forward, and then press the trigger. The hammer should fall. Check the action lock lever 
to make sure that it has retracted up into the action and it's in the fully upward position like it is. Rack the slide and then press and hold the trigger to the rear. The hammer should fall because you still have the safety in the firing position. Rack the slide one more time and then release the trigger and it should reset and the action lock lever should again be in this downward position. That's your basic function check. Now to go one step further, you're going to want to conduct a cycle of operation check. You do this with two dummy cartridges. No gunpowder, no primers in these dummies. Put safety in the on position and load two dummies into the magazine. Depress the action lock lever. Rack the slide and the first shell should land onto the elevator. Push the slide forward and it should chamber into the action. Press the trigger. After you've pushed the safety on, press the trigger and the hammer should fall. <clears throat> Put the slide to the rear and that first dummy should eject. The second one should fall onto the elevator. Press the slide forward again and it should chamber the second dummy cartridge. Depress the action lock lever, that's this lever down here, and open the action fully and the second cartridge should eject. Now you've done a cycle of operation check as well as a basic function check. So there's your procedures for field stripping, reassembly, and function checking your Mossberg 590A1. Yes, I know it's not the only video out there on field stripping the Mossberg, but I hope it helped you out some. Please let me know in the comments if you liked it or hated it and how you think I might improve it. If you're in the Southern California area and would like to be mentored in the art, science, and laws of self-defense, send me an email through my website. The link is in the description. If you like this video and want to learn more about defending yourself with modern small arms, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to stay updated on all the defensive firearms instruction videos. I'm Riley Schrader. Thanks for watching and see you next time with defensive firearms instruction. Thank <laughs> you.